Hi class, Darwin here talking about our uh, nonfiction selections for this block. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the uh, value of the nonfiction genre um, and what impact it can have on uh, emergent young adult readers. I'm going to link uh, points from the uh, novels themselves and also some points from the chapters uh, in the textbook. Uh, I'm also going to expand upon um, the literacy promoting benefits of nonfiction novels in regard to uh, adolescence literary, literacy successes. Uh, so I thought I'd start with uh, a few things out of the text uh, that I thought were appropriate. Um, that if preparing young people for citizenship is our goal, students must develop an understanding of the lives of those who lived before them. So this just talks about uh, the value of, um, of history, understanding history, looking at things that have happened so that we can uh, learn from them and um, reflect on them for situations that arise uh, in, the peasant, in the present or in the future. Um, a well-written biography in Gate encourages curiosity by challenging readers to revisit their own beliefs and prior knowledge about a subject. So, um, you know, in, in some of my selections, you know, the, the, the novels themselves raise some pretty uh, heavy uh, questions. Um, in, uh, in the book Most Dangerous, uh, which is the, uh, the story of uh, Daniel Ellsberg um, and, uh, you know, some things that happened historically during the, uh, the time of the Vietnam War and before, um, you know, the question of uh, our... Um, you know, heads of state, our presidents, uh, infallible, can they make bad decisions? Can bad decisions um, cascade into huge, uh, very profound uh, consequences in history? Um, yes, they can. So I think that's what uh, uh, that particular uh, passage from the text is, is getting at. Um, let's see. Young adults tend to enjoy reading about individuals who have overcome hardships and struggles in their lives or have distinguished themselves through their valor, courage, and conviction of beliefs. Um, here again, I think the, uh, the genre of nonfiction, um, the, the ones that I've read have been very interesting, and they do um, offer some uh, very compelling uh, real-life dramas. Um, you know, the, the, the book also says nonfiction is no longer dry and boring. In fact, it turns distant places in the abstract into real compelling drama. So um, I think that, uh, um, you know, these, these, uh, these nonfiction texts, uh, the fact that they cause uh, the readers to almost uh, go back in time and step into the shoes of some of the main characters, um, look at the situations that they were dealing with and uh, the decisions that they, they were faced with and what those decisions ended up being. I think this is, is really the essence of, of the genre and how it gets, uh, how it gets that, that thought process going. Um, so a couple of uh, uh, readings from the text that I chose. This is a a book called Fatal Fever, uh, Tracking Down Typhoid Mary by Gail Giraud. Um, so I'm going to read uh, something that, that I connected with. Um, this is uh, uh, George Soper um, uh, reflecting on some of the things that, that happened. I had to say I suspected her of making people sick, Soper recalled. It wasn't her fault. He assured her, but there was a good chance she was spreading typhoid through the food she prepared. He offered to show her how to stop infecting others by washing her hands and being careful with her excretions. I thought I could count upon her cooperation in clearing up some of the mystery of what surrounded her past, he later said. I hope Malin would tell him about other places that she'd worked. I wanted specimens of her urine, feces, and blood, Soper remembered telling her. If she would answer my questions and give me the specimens, I would see that she got good medical attention in case that was called for, and without any cost to her. George Soper was stunned by Mary Mallon's reaction to what he considered a reasonable request. With her eyes full of hostility, she chased the epidemic fighter out of her kitchen. Seeing her fury, Soper took the hint and fled down to the hallway through the iron gate that led to, out to the sidewalk. 
I felt rather lucky to escape, he wrote, admitting that maybe he hadn't handled her very well. Um, so in the book uh, Fatal Fever, um, George Soper is uh, he's a um, sanitary engineer, very famous one, very very highly regarded and, and respected for his talents, and uh, he's also uh, quite adept at investigating. So um, the book uh, takes you back in time in the 1900s. Sanitation was was really uh, nowhere near. Uh, what it is today. Um, it does remind you of some places in third world, third world countries where they don't have uh, the same sanitation we have today. Uh, so you can reflect on that. The other thing I thought was neat was, you know, as you're reading this uh, novel, you're stepping into the shoes of a, a sanitation engineer, uh, an investigator, a lab technician, a doctor, a nurse, a judge, and you're facing, um, you know, the circumstances and, 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 thinking about the, the decisions that they faced and what their decisions ended up being, um, and then contemplating whether you agreed with those decisions or maybe you might do something slightly different. Um, Mary Mallon was actually exiled uh, from uh, the United States off to a place called Brothers Island just off the coast of New York. And um, at the time, you know, the, you know, a healthy carrier of typhoid was, you know, there was no precedent for it. So they didn't really know exactly what to do. But Mary Mallon ended up spending a lot of time at Brothers Island, uh, kind of in exile by herself, lonely, and she felt her rights were being violated. And um, she got a lawyer to fight, et cetera, et cetera. But um, again, it, it just brings those types of, uh, you know, really heavy questions into, uh, into your mind and you... Uh, contemplate them. Um, okay, so in the novel, sorry, in the novel Most Dangerous, um, same situation, you've got uh, Dan Ellsberg, who is, um, you know, he, he is, uh, in the beginning of the novel, uh, very, um, very much a believer in uh, supporting the war efforts in Vermont, in uh, Vietnam to um, uh, kind of quash the uh, this domino effect that people talk about, where if one country falls to communism, then a whole bunch follow. So he was a believer and a defender of that. But the more uh, you read, the more you see uh, Dan Ellsberg uh, changing his views. So um, you know. As, as the, the story unfolds, um, you see how uh, his character can completely change his views of right and wrong and take actions that extend beyond a society's laws or accepted principles. So again, the, the, the heavy question that, that this raises, uh, and, there's, and there's a number of uh, other, uh, I'll call them derivative questions, but you know, can heads of state, can presidents, can... Um, you know, heads of, you know, high ranking authorities in government uh, be infallible or, or can they make bad decisions? Can they make, can a series of bad decisions end up in uh, a, prof a very profound impact on, on history and societies? Uh, in the case of the Vietnam War, we lost uh, 30,000 roughly uh, American troops. Uh, Vietnamese, they lost about 2 million troops and uh, innocent civilians. So um, again, very profound impact. Um, I think in terms of uh, uh, the literacy promoting benefits um, of these nonfiction novels in regard to adolescence uh, literacy successes, you know, reading nonfiction helps adolescents develop information literacy, a much needed skill in modern society in which students no longer memorize everything in school that they will need to know as adults. Um, Generally, students who, uh, who read magazines and nonfiction books have higher average reading proficiency than those do not. Uh, reading and information skills go beyond merely accessing information to evaluating and using it. In other words, young adults must construct their own meaning from a text and must use different strategies for reading different texts. Um, in the case of, of my selections, both Fatal Fever and Most Dangerous, I love the way uh, the writers... Um, they, they portray history, but they use a very um, engaging writing style that, that kind of puts you, again, 
back in in these situations and um, contemplating you know these decisions let me read I'll read you uh, um, a passage from most dangerous where they connect you know past history to something that just recently happened so the author makes a connection between um, what Ellsberg did with the Pentagon Papers and what Snowden did with the um, the WikiLeaks so um, this is an interview uh, with Dan Ellsberg Lemon began by asking Ellsberg Ellsberg's opinion of Snowden I think that he's done an enormous service Ellsberg said incalculable service it can't be overestimated to this democracy you say that you like what he has done but he has broken the law I would have done just what he has done Ellsberg shot back I would have broken the law so again um, another heavy heavy question is if you believe strongly in something uh, like geez I don't agree with what the uh, you know the the government is doing in the case of uh, WikiLeaks you know they're they're uh, censoring or, or tape recording um, millions and millions of Americans telephone conversations um, emails etc and Snowden kind of said no I don't want to I don't want to live in a society where that that's acceptable so he acts on his own and again whether you agree with these guys or not um, it does raise these uh, these very challenging questions that that create excellent opportunities for um, having students uh, um, drill down into their beliefs share their beliefs and, and gain a deeper understanding and appreciation of some of the historical events so thank you for listening uh, that's all I had for you